Go. Oh. Hello, I'm Alara Keskill. Uh, I'm joining from LA. Um, I am currently a pipeline technical director at Method Studios. Um, I focus specifically on FX pipelines and Houdini workflows. Um, I've been in the industry for around a year and nine months. I actually graduated from UCLA in 2021, so I'm a COVID graduate. Um, I worked uh, remotely until last month, uh, in which right now I'm working in person at Method Studios to help out with some special projects. Um, our industry has definitely been affected by the uh, strikes that are going on in the film industry. I feel like um, I was super lucky because uh, a lot of my co-workers uh, that I used to work with at Encore VFX just a couple weeks ago, um, they were laid off and I'm really trying to, one of the reasons I'm here at SIGGRAPH is actually give out their information to some recruiters and stuff because, you know, they could use the help and they're not in LA so I just want to give out as much as possible as the least I could do because I was so lucky. Um, and yeah, obviously um, there is definitely a limited amount of uh, women in technical roles. But I can see this personally because um, for the whole year that I've been uh, in Company 3's um, technical uh, departments, I've never had a lot of contact with anyone technically uh, that is a woman. Um, so I am definitely uh, hoping to make some more connections, uh, more diversified connections here at SIGGRAPH this year. Um, and yeah, I'm hoping to see more diversity uh, in the upcoming years as well in the industry. Okay, tell us about your journey, um, courseware, classware that you took at UCLA to get to the career path that you're in now. Yeah. And then also talk a little bit about that uh, convention you went to yesterday, where they had 95% yeah. men and yeah. Just, yeah. Um, so actually when I was starting at UCLA, uh, computer graphics was not something that was even in my mind at all. Um, I come from a very um, overachieving family. Uh, both my parents are doctors. One of them is a neurosurgeon. The other is like dean of a medical school back home. And so, like in my head, uh, coming into computer science, I was kind of thinking like, oh, I'll do a PhD in artificial intelligence and so forth after I graduate from UCLA. Um, I actually took part in a lot of different uh, research groups uh, when I was studying. Uh, my undergrad and I realized that research wasn't really for me in the way that I'm the kind of person that if you tell me to do something in six years I'll probably do it in the last couple months like I'll do a good job but I need kind of like a more fast-paced environment to actually get good stuff done and you know not waste my time um, so around like sophomore year actually um, one of the great things about living in LA is that um, I was walking around in downtown LA for like a paper that I was working on for one of my random courses. It was like an architecture course. And I came across the TV set of like the set of a TV show that I really loved back then. And it was the day after my birthday and I was really feeling myself so I kind of just like walked straight into the set. I made friends with the cinematographers and like they treated me as one of the crew and I carried stuff around for them. I used their trailer trailer restrooms and stuff so that was really fun. And I think that was the first like inception of an idea in my mind in which I felt like, oh, this is actually a space in which I could do stuff in. So after that, it kind of, I would say, evolved on its own. Um, I kind of tried to learn stuff like Maya um, on my own, like just Blender going in and doing some stuff, um, trying out some simulations and burning my computer. Um, so yeah, this is kind of how I got into this industry and like after graduating, I just got into Encore VFX because I really wanted to be in this area. Um, so that's kind of how I got into the industry in general. Um, I was lucky that I had a background in computer science so you could basically apply to anything and everything. So I didn't have the struggles of like, um, I wanted to do this but I have a major in this so I have to do a whole switch. I, don't, I didn't need to do that and I love that I can apply things that I learned in college like on my daily life while also working on things that are absolutely creative and beautiful and gorgeous and 
being able to contribute to that output image is amazing. Um, so about like um, SIGGRAPH this year, um, I the first SIGGRAPH I attended was um, 2020, so it was actually the online one. Um, so that, that's actually the first two SIGGRAPHs that I attended, 2020 and 2021, right. both of which were remote. And I saw that, like, I saw the student volunteers and stuff like that, and I really wanted to get involved too because I didn't know many people in the industry specifically also because, like, I didn't come from an arts background, um, and I just wanted to, you know, uh, make more connections and so forth, but I also just love volunteering in general, so, um, last year for uh, Vancouver SIGGRAPH 2022, I was in the... CAP volunteer program, which is conference apprentice program, in which um, I was basically in this media team and we walked around with cameras interviewing people like through the whole conference. It was very fun. I got to meet so many amazing people. Like I love SIGGRAPH because there are so many interesting people with su such interesting backgrounds that like you can talk for hours and you would never get bored. Um, so this is the second year uh, that I'm volunteering for SIGGRAPH. Um, I'm actually now a year-long volunteer in the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion team, uh, which is an amazing team, amazing people. Uh, shout out to Tony from here. <laughs> Love you, Tony. Um, and um, I also, uh, for the first time, attended DJ Pro yesterday, uh, which is the Digital Production Symposium. Uh, that is connected to SIGGRAPH, it's like a pre-SIGGRAPH kind of conference sort of thing. And one of the things that really um, stood out to me was the fact that there were so little, like diversity in general was so non-existent over there, it's insane. Like, um, when I was standing in the room, there was like 400 people in general in this one really large kind of ballroom, and I could see maybe like 10 and um, it is really sad, but one good thing about it is like, you know how in uh, concerts you will have like a really long line in front of the female bathroom uh, and like no line at all for the men's bathroom? This time it was the exact opposite, so I didn't have to wait at all to get into the restroom. But yeah, it's um, it was so funny because we would find each other, like the woman, uh, we would find each other and we would talk about like, how did you get here? Like, how did you hear about this? Um, and uh, one of my friends uh, that I made yesterday actually told me, was like, yeah, I always try to find a woman here and like ask them how they got here because there were never any, which is just sad. But, you know, we're working towards that goal of increasing diversity in this industry and you know, I might even volunteer for DigiPro for next year so that I can get more attendees that are diverse and from different backgrounds, which would be nice. So, DigiPro, if you're watching this, I'll be reaching out to you. Oh, fantastic. Let me see your name tag one more time. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Alara. Of course. All right.